number four of our Facebook Live Football Edition. We are out here at St. Francis de Sales this afternoon as the Stallions prepare to take on Youngstown Mooney tomorrow night. And our guest to begin the show today is Stallions coach Ryan Wiggins. Thank you and welcome. Thanks for having me. You've got a big game tomorrow. You know, you've, you've won your first two. How have you liked overall what you've seen from the first two weeks for this team? Well, it's great to be uh, off to a 2-0 start. I think we've done some really good things. We've been able to start fast. I think we've been opportunistic on defense. We've been able to get some turnovers and um, put some points on the board. And I think offensively, one of the things we've done well is we've spread it around yeah. and uh, gotten, you know, not not one person has been the spotlight. We've been able to spread it around, which I think makes you harder to defend. So, um, you know, so far so good. But I really feel like the road uh, starting starting against Mooney is going to get tougher and tougher each and every week. Uh, big picture perspective. You guys have. Uh, you know, been to a couple of, you've been to several state playoffs that you've been to, you've been to a state championship game. What are some of the biggest challenges behind, you know, breaking through and continuing to get to that level and even going beyond and have got so close? I just think football, there's so much adversity. You know, there's so many challenges, not only the challenges on the field, but the challenges off the field, uh, dealing with injuries, you know, dealing with um, different things. That, you know, football is so fluid. I, I was telling our families, few weeks ago, I've never started a season and ended the season with the same lineup, you know, for various reasons. So, uh, and, and then there's just the mental part too. I mean, this, things wear on you and, um, you know, how do you handle adversity? How, how do you handle winning? How do you handle losing at all? Uh, it's just a, such a fine line, you know. There's games where you play very well and you don't come out on top. Um, so, continuing improvement, we really just try to keep things in perspective one week at a time and try to get better and really very simple. This sounds so simple, but it's true. We just try to win the next game. What's the big? What are the biggest ways I should say that you've seen the program grow over the time that you've been here? Does it go back to that depth that, that you've referenced a couple times, and it seems like you know that's a huge key for you? Or there are other areas? Uh, I think uh, you know when I was when I came on as head coach, our program didn't need to change; it needed to continue. And I think that's one of the reasons that uh, they asked me to, to step in and be the head coach. And so things that have went on here for a long time, long before I was here, the, the off-season, the hard work in the weight room, uh, the expectation of, of winning, of excellence, you know, and that goes beyond just football. Our school talks about that in everything that we do. And um, so really, I think it's important for me as the head coach to make sure that our players understand that we, you know, we're on the shoulders of those that came before us. We have a standard uh, that's been here for a long time, and it's our job to try to achieve it. Now, you played here in high school. Yes. Right? I, was it ever a dream of yours at that time to, to be standing on the sidelines here on a Friday night? Is that it, you know, I, I, I actually I wanted to get into coaching. That's how I got into it so young. I was, you know, Bob Jacoby had an opening, and I told him I wanted to get into it, and I got started right away. Uh, and so I don't know that I ever thought it would come to this. But, uh, you know, it's been, it's been neat. It's pretty neat to coach at your alma mater, a place where – spent a lot of time and put a lot of work and uh, a place where it's personal you know it's personal here and so um, it's been it's been fun week three uh, Youngstown Mooney what might be some of the keys to the matchup this week I'll tell you the number one key that I've told our kids is physicality I, I mean yes you have to play well offensively and defensively and there's scheme things that we're trying to do but the number one thing is the physicality they force you to play a very physical brand of football for 48 minutes and if you don't have that, it, it, the schemes won't even matter. The schemes are secondary uh, to play in a very physical game. And I, in any big game, you, you can't make too many mistakes. You have to limit your mistakes because there's going to be a handful of things um, that decide the outcome, and you've got to get your share of those. So that's what we're looking to try to do is try to play as complete as we can but in a very physical manner. Well, we'll be covering that game tomorrow night. That'll be one of the Friday Night Live games of the week. And uh, we thank you for uh, Ryan Wiggins and Jared Ulrich. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Coach. Right, Appreciate you. your time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Stallions taking on Youngstown Mooney tomorrow night. Practice getting underway uh, off to the right out of our view. And uh, Coach Wiggins heading over there to finish preparations for the ball game. This, these are teams that have crossed paths a few times uh, the last few years. And, and they both have played about three times, right. Yeah, they haven't played for a few years. But uh, this was one of those that I know I circled and thought, this could be a really interesting matchup for the sales this week. So just for a lot of the reasons he was talking about, just with Mooney being so physical and being traditionally one of those one of those state powers. I mean, it looks it's a really exciting matchup. On Ryan was telling us before we went on the air that uh, some coaches from Oklahoma, hopefully they have a better night Friday than they do Saturday. We'll be That's here to right. watch the game.
tomorrow. They're looking at some guys. Looking apparently. at Brian Osamoa, mm -hmm. uh, the talented senior linebacker for DeSales. And, uh, I know that's one of the schools he's considering, so that's going to be you know, very important to see what happens. And another tie there, Youngstown Mooney, the alma mater of Bob Stoops, who was the former head coach of Oklahoma coming into this year, and uh, his brother Mike. That's right. Is, is, is we figured that out. Coordinator. That's <laughs> He's right. the defensive coordinator, and then they have Mark Stoops, who coaches at Kentucky. Well, heading on to some of the other big games of the week, another battle of Hilliard. We talked about one last Thursday. That was a grinded-out affair. Darby beat Davidson. Now Davidson takes on Bradley. This, this seems like it might be a clash of styles to me. Mm -hmm. uh, with... I, I think I read in, in our story this week, Brian White is quoted as saying something like, uh, you know, we're going to run the option no matter what, yeah. or something like that, which, I mean, you would expect that from them. Uh -huh. I mean, that's what they do, but uh, is what, what kind of pressure is Bradley going to put on them with their athleticism? That is the big question, I think. Well, and that's when you said that, that Brian White said, I read the preview earlier today, Bradley can do a lot of things. They can... They can run the ball quite well. They can spread it out quite well. I covered their win over New Albany last week. I mean, they threw early and often with a lot of success. They had a punt return for a touchdown, had a rushing touchdown, a couple of receiving touchdowns. They are definitely proving they're one of the more dangerous teams in the area with all those weapons. You've talked about, or we've talked about Davon Anderson and uh, Corey, Corey Taylor. Corey Taylor. Mm -hmm. Tell, what did you think about Trey Warner? I've heard really good things about him, too. Very impressed. He had the 67-yard punt return uh, for a touchdown, and he had a one-yard a touchdown uh, early in the third quarter that I, I want to say that that was the touchdown and evoked the running clock. Uh, he, he might be an underrated weapon for them, but he's uh, he's very solid. Uh, Scott Hennon was telling me he thinks he's definitely one of the, the top tier players on that team. And, uh, you know, we can't forget about Josh Stewart either, the uh, talented quarterback who's taken over for Will Phillips and seemed like he must be doing pretty well so far. Very good field general for them. So then uh, we head next. Yeah, Olin Tangi at Reynoldsburg. One of my teams against one of your teams as far as coverage. That's right. This one, I'm covering this tomorrow night for this week's sports and the dispatch. Hoping not to be there at 5 after 12. Hopefully for no five-hour game. That was a 52-51 oh, right. Braves right. victory last year after a couple of weather delays. This looks like it could be another fun one. Olin Tangi trying to go to 3-0. and Reynoldsburg coming off a huge win over St. Charles last week. Well, Reynoldsburg in, in week one. On, yes, they, they did struggle a little bit offensively. They made some errors. They had some turnovers, things like that, that didn't really go their way that night when, in, the, in the loss to New Albany. I know they felt a lot better about how they played against St. Charles last week. And, and you know, St. Charles is, is a bit of you – know, they're struggling a little bit right now. But I I think 34 nothing. I, I, that says that says a lot right there. That's pretty impressive. Absolutely. And you, and you look at Olin Tangi. When I talked to Coach Solos on Saturday for the preview – they won 21 to 10. They had 21 first half points. Three of them rushed, all, all 21 of them on rushing touchdowns. He told me they left as many points on the board as they scored, that if not for Grove City's solid defense, and, and they're getting better under Tennis and Barney. And a couple turnovers, the weather didn't help anybody last Friday. That it could have been a much worse game than it was, but Olin Tangi looking to establish themselves as the power yet again this year. Olin Tangi's got a lot of different options on offense from, from what I can gather from looking at box scores and, and talking with you and talking with, you know, just learning about the team and stuff. Uh, but Ali uh, Iverson. Iverson is a really good, really talented player for him. And who are some of the other guys that impressed you about all the team? Well, and yeah, the Slade brothers, uh, Zach and Jacob, who are heading to Michigan State. Uh, Zach scored one of those rushing touchdowns last week. I mean, in, in five seasons of covering Olin Tangy football under Mark Solis, one thing he loves to do is get some of those big defensive linemen to come in as a fullback on the offensive side and bully over down in short yardage situations. And that's exactly what Zach Slade does. Uh, he's the one that's going to do it. Uh, one of the few guys that will go both ways for them. One, one of the other games I know you're going to be keeping an eye on, uh, Upper Arlington against Westerville North. I, you know, it's kind of intriguing, I think. Both both teams really were unhappy after losses last week. You're not, very rarely you're going to be happy after a loss, but the way that the games went are what made those two teams unhappy. Westerville North falling to Thomas Worthington, uh, 45 to 21. The game really got away from North late. Uh, they were coming off a shutout of Groveport in Week One. Upper Arlington, meanwhile, was played by turnovers and losing to Westerville Central. Okay, and that's and it's tough when you have a new some of those new offensive weapons, but both of them are going to be kind of eager for redemption. You know, maybe Westerville Central is maybe a little better than we were thinking. I mean, after they only scored three points in Week One against Guyana, uh, they come out they score 31, and they defensively, I think Westerville Central may have done a really good job on them last week. What their quarterback for UA only threw. Uh, it was 16 for 37, right? Yes, yeah, they Sass. put the ball up a lot. Uh, Sammy Sass, who also uh, 
Division One bound catcher. He hasn't committed anywhere. No, actually, he has committed. He committed to Wright State, and he also could be the basketball uh, point guard this year. And and that's not to say that the teams that they played, you know, in, in week one weren't good. It, it, it's right previously, but it, those were just disappointing losses for those teams. And you know, UA looking to get back on track because they think they can be a playoff team in Region Two this year. That's right. And then how about uh, Harvest Prep at Mifflin? We've got that's another game we think looks really interesting. This is um, Harvest Prep. Obviously, is a Division Seven team. They had to change their schedule a little bit this year because Zanesville Rosecrans moved into the MSL Cardinal against them. So they added Mifflin, which has been kind of a team that's been around that 500 mark. Hasn't really been very good for the last few years, but. Turns out this year they're kind of an up-and-coming team. They've got a good senior quarterback this year. I, I, what do you think about this matchup? Well, with both teams being 2-0, and you know, when you're, you're Division Seven playing a, a larger school, you know, you always have to feel like you have something to prove, even though, you know, a lot of people know about the biggest weapon for Harvest Prep, and that's Daniel Bangora. I mean, that's his right. numbers through a couple weeks are Incredible body. last week, 470 yards rushing. Yeah. And I was texting with Coach Smith, and he's like, oh, yeah, he also had 28 yards receiving. Uh, so almost 500 yards of offense created by one person. Right. 640 yards on the ground so far, and that's not counting, like you said, the 30 yards receiving that he had. Seven touchdowns already this year, and he's he's poised for another huge year for the Warriors. Well, yeah, and he was our this week uh, football player of the week this uh -huh. week, uh, and I believe we looked it up, and he has the second highest rushing total of any running back from Central Ohio history behind Travis Clodfelder of Independence, who rushed for 484 yards in a game several years ago. So That was I, after I went there, I think. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah it was. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I think this this is, a, in a way, for Harvest Prep, they really don't have anything to lose because they are playing the Division yeah. II team. But if they could, you know, they could gain that, you know, get, if they're able to get this win, you got to figure they're, gonna, they're not going to have a lot of problems in the MSL Cardinal. I mean, this could be the type of win that gets them into, like, a number one seed type of finish for Harvest Prep. Sure. Another big game that stands out to me, I, I know you did the preview on this, Pickerington Central against Trotwood Madison. You know, Pickerington Central off to a very good start. Boy, they've played a tough schedule so far. <laughs> and now they're going up against another rich pedigree in Trotwood Madison this week at home at Pickerington. Well, Coach Sherrod has always said he'll he'll play anybody. And, I mean, he's proven that yeah. with the teams that they play. I, I'm always impressed with the teams they're able to put on their schedule. Uh, Trotwood Madison has the same running back and the same quarterback as when they played them two years ago, if you can believe right. that. Uh, and that was a game I was able to go to. It was at, a, it was at an 8.30 p.m. start on a Friday night of opening week back in 2015. Great game, 32-25. to 25. Trotwood Madison won that. And some of the guys for Pickering to Central have not forgotten about that. <laughs> I'm sure they haven't. You know, one of those guys you mentioned, I believe his name, Ravion Hargrove. I hope I'm not pronouncing right. that wrong. These numbers, the last two years, not including the first two weeks, 4,738 yards rushing, 62 touchdowns. Yeah. And that's insane. 40 of them coming in one yeah. year. I want to say that was his sophomore year. It was his sophomore year. Right, exactly. And he had 205 yards and four touchdowns against Pickwell last week. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know what else you can really add to that. That's, a, that's <laughs> going to be a, a fun game. Pickerington Central, just, they're Pickerton number one Central's in our Super defense. 7. Man. Pickerington yeah. Central's defense is really good. So I think it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how they handle that speed. And, yeah, I think, I think it could be a really great game. You have a couple other interesting games written down, too. Another one in the OCC Ohio, like Pickerington Central, is Gehanna. And they play Cincinnati Elder tomorrow. And it begins an interesting stretch for them. I think it's, what, four consecutive weeks that they play uh, playoff teams from a year ago. Yeah, uh, an impressive start for Gehanna. I mean, they're, well, they've are they only given up three points this season. and Yeah, they, yeah that first week. Yeah, they held they held Westerville South. They held Jalen Guild, I think, 43 yards or something. So, good, it'll be a good test for them. Elder was a playoff team. A few other games we want to touch on. You mentioned uh, one of the battles of the Southwest City School District. Grove City at Central Crossing. Both of those teams looking for their first win. Both of them under first-year coaches, at least at those schools. Trevor White used to be down the street from here at Beechcroft. Uh, Te Tennis and Varney went from Franklin Heights over to Grove City. Sort of an intriguing game. Grove City, Tennis and Varney says he feels like they're getting better, and I guess you can see that from the results. Yeah, for sure. Uh, a couple other games we, that we thought were interesting. North Union at Grandview. And Pickerington North at Centerville. Those are a couple other games we need to watch this week. Pickerington North last week. One of the biggest victories of the week. Maybe the biggest of the week. 35 nothing over Double Jones. That's right. Nick Giardino, I want to mention his name. 19 tackles in that ball game. I, I know that you've what, talked to him. Yeah, talked to him yesterday. Yeah. 
really uh, really a great kid. And he's he's number four all time in Pickerington North's all time tackles. List. So, and it was what eleven yards that they allowed last year. Yeah, eleven week? yards as a team. The school record. Yeah. And Brett McAvoy does a great job running the Twitter. Free plug, I guess. He tweeted that out last week. Eleven yards in that ball right. game. Well, this has been another fun one on location right. for the third consecutive week. And after tomorrow, we're going to be thirty percent done with the regular season. Amazing. It's, it flies fast, everybody. Enjoy your game wherever you're off to tomorrow night. We will talk to you next Thursday, 3.30. For Jared Alry, I'm Dave Papura. So long, everybody.